the second episode of Dead City saw Maggie and Negan continue to make their way through the heart of New York City. We got to see what life is now like in the Big Apple, the people who live there, how they get around, new friends and enemies, and overall setting the stage for the next few episodes. I've got a few things to go over, stuff I noticed, some more theories, and my overall thoughts on this episode. This was a bit of a shorter episode, clocking in at around 39 minutes, so this will probably be a shorter video. So let's break down The Walking Dead, Dead City, Episode 2, Who's There? So like I said, this episode gave us a better look at New York and really developed this new location in the Walking Dead universe. Things are very different here compared to anywhere else that we've seen. They're all kind of isolated in Manhattan, saying things like you can get here, but you can't get off. And that really adds to the isolating nature that they're going for. There's this new hierarchy of power. The Croat and his people are more or less in charge and everybody else just kind of has to hide or run from them. Because this island is so isolated and picked apart, there's no more guns or ammo, so there's a lot of improvised weapons, which I'll get to in a moment, but everything seems more or less kind of repurposed or improvised. The streets are either crawling with walkers or raining them, so people have to get around on rooftops by the use of zip lines. This is especially dangerous with no safety equipment, and also when Maggie rejects Negan's help when she's dangling over the edge. So far, we've seen two different groups of people. There's the Croat and his people, called the Barazzis, and these Resistance people. I'm not sure if they have a name or not. These two groups kind of mimic the Saviors and our group from the main show. We see these Resistance fighters trying to grow new life in the world and are forced to run when the Barazzis are coming because they'll either take what they have or destroy it. So in a way, we're seeing a new natural, like, food chain of the world. We've seen it before, and no matter where you are, it continues to happen. So the weapons. There's no guns anymore, and everything has to be improvised from the island they're on. Now, The Walking Dead has a history of incredibly stupid improvised weaponry, but a modified nail gun? I don't actually think that that's that bad. Its use seems effective, but also a little problematic. I mean, if you miss this, you're dead, but if you also have more than one person or one walker coming at you, you're also dead. It's like if somebody were to use a musket in this series, which, if it wasn't Fear's final season, I'd really be worried that they were going to use that idea. What does seem incredibly stupid are these ripped up street sign poles. I think that they do wear gloves, but they haven't even wrapped, like, at least duct tape or make some improvised handles for them, so it's a bit strange. I get that there's no guns, but there's no swords or anything either. There's gotta be like several different shops around the city where you could find some knives, machetes, whatever it is, and if the Croat and his people are in charge, then they would probably have those weapons. On the flip side, I think that these helmets are actually a pretty good idea. Maybe that's where all their blades went. They aren't exactly wearing any armor, just trench coats, so I don't see how effective just a helmet would be, but if like the Commonwealth or the CRM had helmets with blades on them, that would be a really great idea. One of the things I was surprised to see was the continuation of Ginny's character in this new hilltop place. In the last episode, I was wondering where this new hilltop could be since they were in New York and hilltop is in Virginia, but I assume that they just moved up to New York or New Jersey or something. But in this episode, when they're introducing Ginny to the new class, they say that she's from Oceanside, which just really confuses me. So where is this new hilltop? Are they really implying that they went all the way back down to Virginia? Dude, I've done that drive numerous times. New York to Virginia is like an eight hour drive. The GPS recalculating and getting you lost three times along that way and you have to stop for gas somewhere in the middle. Did they really do this drive off screen with no explanation whatsoever? Also, Oceanside is alive and well now. I thought that they were decimated by Lance Hornsby and the Commonwealth, so that was quite the name drop. Anyways, when Ginny gets there, she looks really intently at this water tower, and then they emphasize it again when she leaves. I don't really have any clue as to why they did this or what it's leading to, but it was really obvious. Maybe she has a fear of water towers, I guess, or maybe just water? I'm not sure, let me know your thoughts in the comments. We also got a quick flashback scene to Maggie and Herschel at this new hilltop place, so they relocated a little while ago and not because the Croat attacked them. 
This was a nice addition to the episode and gave us a bit of context as to why Maggie is so bitter on this expedition. This also raises some more questions about why Herschel is so bitter towards his mom. We see that he has a drawing of like some kind of superhero, but he crumples it up and throws it on the ground. Maggie picks it up, and in the present time, we see the old witch rummaging through their belongings, and Maggie yells at her when she's about ready to open a tin can. I bet you anything that that picture is in that tin can, along with maybe something else that must be important. This wasn't really something I expected, so I'm excited to hear more about Maggie and Herschel's relationship and why it's so strained. This also reminds me of another story about somebody going on a trip because of somebody that they had a strained relationship with, but I won't get into that in this video. We also got to see a bit more of Pearly Armstrong's backstory in the episode. I forgot to mention this in the last video, but Pearly has this card with him with an address and the name Joel Armstrong. So he goes there in this episode to find his brother, or at least I'm assuming it's his brother, and he's dead in the apartment. He had clearly lived there for some time, had a drug habit, and I think most importantly, a gun. How will this gun come into play? I'm not sure yet, but they made quite a point to show that the city and the people in it don't have guns anymore. All those machine guns and rifles from the first episode are, I guess, lost, so that kind of sucks. This whole scene was really great and told you a lot about Pearly's backstory without any dialogue. But because it didn't have any dialogue, we don't know what this did for Pearly. It's either one of two options. This gave him some kind of new motivation, or it gave him some closure. Time will tell on that front, but I know the gun is definitely going to be important. But perhaps the best part of the episode, and what I'm assuming will be the best part of the series, was Negan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan really seems to love this character and this role so much. A bit of his darker side came out in the episode, we got to see him tap back into his old ways, cracking one-liners and making fun of his enemies, so much so that it apparently scared like a dozen people away. That was kind of stupid, but alright. Knock knock. Who's there? Butter. Butter who? Boo to this bread for me, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> he starts pouring this guy's blood over the crowd and they just stand there and take it instead of, I don't know, backing up. It was so funny. There's also a few moments in the episode that are making it seem like this is going to be a one-way trip for Negan. So perhaps that's what they're trying to make us think, and then Ginny will be his ultimate reason not to sacrifice himself. We also got more to the Croat's backstory. He was a torturer for the saviors, and an especially sick one at that. Negan tried to take him out, but missed, and instead got his ear. I wasn't initially gonna say this, but given how we're seeing some flashbacks in the show, I think a flashback sequence to the Sanctuary would be really cool. Even if it's like reused footage from before and the Croat is just in the background somewhere, that would be nice. Like if they go back to the lineup and cut to a close-up of him just being there, that would add some much needed context about how he knows who Maggie is. Maggie and Negan also have this scene talking about the history of the saviors, and Negan says that he was only bad when he had to protect his people and put on a show. Maggie seems absolutely flabbergasted that he would say this, but then he uses the same threatening and imposing personality later on in the episode to protect her. So she kind of sees what he means by this. Remember, Negan killing Abe and Glenn was a direct result of Rick's group attacking first. Just thought I'd bring that up. Also, I didn't mention this last week, but I'm really digging the music in the show. It sounds like a mix of The Last of Us and some of Bear's work from around seasons 5 or 6, and I'm really liking it so far. People are probably going to say that nothing happened in this episode and it was a bottle episode, but it actually wasn't. Sure, this episode wasn't as flashy, but it was setting up the world and the characters we're going to be seeing for the rest of the show, probably, and also setting up the chessboard for character motivations, backstories, and moving them closer to the overall objective. For Maggie and Negan, that was meeting this new band of survivors, for Ginny, that was leaving New Hilltop and heading to New York, and for Armstrong, that was getting caught by the Croat. Stuff did happen in this episode episode, but I know people are going to say it was slow and boring. What are your thoughts on the episode? Let me know down in the comments below, along with any other theories that you have for the rest of the series. If you enjoyed, remember to leave a like and subscribe, so that way you don't miss next week's analysis. Special thanks to my channel members, you guys are the absolute best, and you guys are the first to see this video. So if you want to see videos early like them, become a channel member. You get lots of exclusive perks depending on the tier, so check it out by hitting that join button. Special thanks to these guys right here. And I'll see you all in the next one. Yeah.